Glenn Campbell, a name synonymous with country music, was a legendary artist whose melodious tunes and soulful lyrics touched the hearts of millions around the globe. But his illustrious career had its share of personal struggles. His most significant was his battle with Alzheimer's. But his passing in 2017 was not the end of his story. It marked the beginning of a contentious legal battle over his estate. Join Facts First as we present why Glenn Campbell's children didn't inherit his millions. Glenn's Life and Career Glenn Campbell, born April 22, 1936, hailed from a humble background. His birthplace, a small family farm nestled between the towns of Billstown and Delight in Arkansas, was a far cry from the glitz and glamour of the stages he later graced. As one of 12 children in a sharecropping family, Campbell's early life was marked by financial hardship. But it was also steeped in music, a rich family tradition that ultimately shaped his destiny. At age four, his father gifted him a $5 Sears and Roebuck guitar. By the time he was a teen, Campbell had honed his skills and was performing paid gigs and guest spots on local radio stations. At 14, he dropped out of school to pursue a career in music. In the 60s, he moved to L.A., a city that became instrumental in his rise to fame. He initially worked as a session guitarist at the American Music Company, a small publishing house. His exceptional talent didn't go unnoticed, and he soon found himself working with some of the biggest names in the industry, including Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, and the Beach Boys. But Campbell wasn't destined to remain in the background. His breakthrough as a solo artist came in 1967 with the release of Gentle On My Mind, a track that found success on both the country and pop charts. This was quickly followed by By the Time I Get to Phoenix, another hit that further cemented his status as a crossover star. Campbell had an ability to bridge the gap between country and pop music, a talent that resonated with a wide audience and set him apart in the industry. The 70s were a golden era for Campbell. He dominated the charts with number one hits like Rhinestone Cowboy and Southern Nights, songs that have since become synonymous with his name. His success wasn't limited to the U.S., his music reached audiences worldwide. In recognition of his significant contributions to the music industry, he was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2005 and received a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2012. His personal life was as complex as his career was illustrious. He was married four times and fathered eight children. His last marriage to Kimberly Woolen in 1982 was his longest, lasting until his death. They had three children together, Cal, Shannon, and Ashley. From his previous marriages, Campbell had five more children, Debbie, Kelly, Travis, Kane, and Dylan. It was three of these children from earlier marriages, Travis, Kelly, and Wesley, who were notably excluded from his will, a decision that led to a contentious legal dispute following his death. Campbell struggles with Alzheimer's in 2011, Glenn Campbell shared with the world a deeply personal and life-altering diagnosis. He was suffering from Alzheimer's disease. This form of dementia, known for its progressive memory loss and cognitive decline, eventually led to the end of his musical career and his life. The impact of the disease on Campbell's life was profound. As his condition worsened, he began to experience memory problems, often losing his train of thought mid-sentence. Despite these challenges, Campbell made the brave decision to continue performing, embarking on a farewell tour that allowed him to connect with his fans one last time. His struggle with Alzheimer's also had a significant impact on his career. In 2011, he released Ghost on the Canvas, an album that received warm reviews, but as his disease progressed, he was forced to retire from touring in 2013. But he continued to make music, releasing See You There later that year and his final album, Adios, in 2017. His decision to go public with his diagnosis was a courageous move that brought much-needed attention to Alzheimer's disease. His openness about the condition helped to destigmatize the disease and shed light on the struggles faced by those living with Alzheimer's as well as their families. His journey was documented in the 2014 film Glenn Campbell, I'll Be Me. It provided an intimate look at his battle with the disease. The film's song, I'm Not Gonna Miss You, won a Grammy for Best Country Song and was nominated for an Oscar. The Controversy Over Campbell's Will the controversy surrounding Glenn Campbell's will emerged shortly after his death in 2017. The will, drafted in 2006, explicitly excluded three of his eight children, 
William, also known as Travis, Kelly, and Wesley. The exclusion sparked a legal dispute that lasted for years. The three disinherited children, all from Campbell's previous marriages, contested the will, arguing that their father lacked the necessary mental capacity when he signed the document due to his Alzheimer's disease. They claimed he was subject to undue influence, which led to their exclusion from the will. The legal battle was not only about the inheritance, but also raised questions about Campbell's mental state at the time the will was made. Alzheimer's disease, known for its debilitating impact on memory and cognitive function, can impair a person's ability to make informed decisions, including legal ones. The children argued that their father's diagnosis should have been taken into account when assessing the validity of the will. The case was further complicated by the fact that Campbell's estate was estimated to be worth $50 million at the time of his death, but the filed will estimated the value at $410,000. This discrepancy added another layer of complexity to the dispute. The legal fees incurred in the estate were also a point of contention. Debbie Campbell Cloyd, one of Campbell's daughters, questioned the legal fees totaling $211,000 incurred by the estate with G.T. Law, Greenberg Traurig. Kimberly Campbell, the widow of Glenn Campbell, defended these fees, stating that they were justified due to the complex nature of the task of valuing and protecting the late singer's assets. In a surprising turn of events, the three disinherited children dropped their fight to contest the validity of the wills in late 2018. They agreed to dismiss their complaint, and the legal filing in Davidson County Probate Court did not specify the reasons behind this decision. This marked the end of the legal battle over Campbell's will, but the controversy surrounding it continues to be a significant part of his legacy. Contesting a will can be a complex, expensive, and emotionally taxing process. The legal fees can quickly mount, and the emotional toll of a family dispute, especially one that plays out in public, can be significant. The resolution of the dispute marked the end of a contentious chapter in the aftermath of Campbell's death but it also left many questions unanswered. The case highlighted the complexities and challenges that can arise when dealing with estate planning and inheritance disputes, particularly in situations involving a debilitating illness like Alzheimer's disease. Furthermore, it raises important questions about the rights of children from previous marriages and the potential for them to be disinherited. It highlights the need for clear communication within families about estate planning decisions to prevent misunderstandings and disputes after. After a loved one's death. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite song from Glenn Campbell? Let us know in the comments section below.